Hi friends. Yesterday I did the 30th uh, episode of my daily vlog and uh, I feel pretty awesome about um, pushing myself every day to, to put out a vlog, to put my ideas onto video and, uh, and post them online. And I've decided that I'm going to um, experiment a little bit and, and I don't want to um, necessarily be bound by people's expectations and, and so if you're watching and you think that you're sort of expecting me to talk about a certain type of thing, the ideas that I've been talking about in the past month, then you may be a little bit uh, surprised because I'm going to take this in a little bit of a different direction. So I've decided that for the month of January, I'm going to um, be reading stories and poems um, that I find interesting and awesome, and, uh, and that's what I'm going to start with today. So um, a couple of weeks ago at uh, Toastmasters meeting, I read... Uh, an abridged version of um, a David Sedaris story called Six to Eight Black Men. And uh, I want to read that uh, today on this vlog. So here it is. Uh, David Sedaris, Six to Eight Black Men. In the Netherlands, the children open their presents on December 5th in celebration of St. Nicholas Day. It sounded soft and quaint until I spoke to a man named Oscar, who filled me in on a few of the details as we walked from my hotel to the Amsterdam train station. Unlike the jolly, obese American Santa, St. Nicholas is painfully thin and dresses not unlike the Pope, topping his robes with a tall hat resembling an embroidered tea cozy. The outfit, I was told, is a carryover from his former career when he served as the Bishop of Turkey. I'm sorry, I said. But could you repeat that? One doesn't want to be too much of a cultural chauvinist, but this seemed completely wrong to me. For starters, Santa didn't used to do anything. He's not retired, and more important, he has nothing to do with Turkey. It's too dangerous there, and the people wouldn't appreciate him. When, I, when asked how he got from Turkey to the North Pole, Oscar told me with complete conviction that St. Nicholas currently resides in Spain, which again is simply not true. Though he could probably live wherever he wanted, Santa chose the North Pole specifically because it is harsh and isolated. No one can spy on him and he doesn't have to worry about people coming to the door. Anyone can come to the door in Spain. And in that outfit, he'd almost certainly be recognized. On top of that, he doesn't speak any Spanish. Santa can say, hello, how are you, can I get you some candy, fine. He knows enough to get by, but he's not fluent and he certainly doesn't need tapas. While our Santa flies on a sled, the Dutch version arrives by boat and then transfers to a white horse. The event is televised and great crowds gather at the waterfront to greet him. I'm not sure if there's a set date, but he generally docks in late November and spends a few weeks hanging out, asking people what they want. I said, does he have any elves? Maybe I'm overly sensitive, but I couldn't help but feel personally insulted when Oscar denounced the very idea as grotesque and unrealistic. Elves, he said, they are just so silly. The words silly and unrealistic were redefined when I learned that St. Nicholas travels with what has consistently been described as six to eight black men. I asked several Dutch people to narrow it down, but none of them could give me an exact number. It was always six to eight, which seems strange seeing as they've had hundreds of years to get an accurate headcount. The six to eight black men were characterized as personal slaves until the mid-1950s when the political climate changed and it was decided that instead of being slaves, they were just good friends. I think that history has proved that something usually becomes between slavery and friendship. A period of time marked not by cookies and quiet hours by the fire, but by bloodshed and mutual hostility. They have such violence in the Netherlands, but rather than duking it out amongst themselves, Santa and his former slaves decided to take it out on the public. 
In the early years, if a child was naughty, Saint Nicholas and the six to eight black man would beat him with what Oscar described as the small branch of a tree. A switch? Yes, he said, that's it. They'd kick him and beat him with a switch. Then, if the youngster was really bad, they'd put him in a sack and take him to Spain. Saint Nicholas would kick you? Well, not anymore, Oscar says. Now he just pretends to kick you. He considered this to be progressive, but in a way I think it's almost more perverse than the original punishment. I'm going to hurt you, but not really. How many times have we fallen for that line? The fake slap invariably makes contact, adding the elements of shock and betrayal to what had previously been plain old-fashioned fear. What kind of Santa spends his time pretending to kick people before stuffing them into a canvas sack? Then, of course, you've got the six to eight former slaves who could potentially go off at any moment. This, I think, is the greatest difference between us and the Dutch. While a certain segment of our population might be perfectly happy with this arrangement, if you told the average white American that six to eight bla nameless black men would be sneaking into his house in the middle of the night, he would barricade the doors and arm himself with whatever he could get his hands on. Six to eight, did you say? In the years before central heating, Dutch children would leave their shoes by the fireplace. The promise being that unless they planned to beat you, kick you, or stuff you into a sack, St. Nicholas and the six to eight black men would fill your clogs with presents. Aside from the threats of violence and kidnapping, it's not much different from hanging your stockings from the mantle. Now that so few people actually have a working fireplace, Dutch children are instructed to leave their shoes beside the radiator, furnace, or space heater. St. Nicholas and the six to eight black men arrive on horses which jump from the yard onto the roof. At this point, I guess they either jump back down and use the door, or stay put and vaporize through pipes and electrical cords. Oscar wasn't so clear on the particulars, but really, who can blame him? We have the same problem with our Santa. He's supposed to use the chimney, but if you don't have one, he still manages to get in. It's best not to think about it too hard. While eight flying reindeer are a hard pill to swallow, our Christmas story remains relatively dull. Santa lives with his wife in a remote polar village and spends one night a year traveling around the world. If you're bad, he leaves you coal. If you're good and live in America, he'll give you just about anything you want. We tell our children to be good and send them off to bed, where they lie awake anticipating their great bounty. A, a Dutch parent has a decidedly hairier story to relate, telling his children, listen, you might want to pack a few things before going to bed. The former bishop of Turkey will be coming tonight along with six to eight black men. They might stuff you into a sack and take you to Spain, or they might just pretend to kick you. We don't know for sure, but we want you to be prepared. That's a a story that I really love, it's uh, Six to Eight Black Men by David Sedaris. And um, for the rest of January, I'll be telling stories and poems like that. So um, I'll, I'll be enjoying it. <laughs> Maybe you will be too. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.